Welcome to Series of 16 Squared by Tangulations. This is a video of, uh, to make a reference for background tangles. This is video number two. So we did our first video with Mr May's Necton Static Fescue and therefore I'm going to show the next row here where we introduce a few more tangles and techniques for using tangles in a background. So the first one I want to do is a lovely wee tangle called a rain dotty. It's so simple and easy to do. We're just going to, to instead of drawing some or, full orbs in an area, I'm just going to draw them with dots. And I'll choose a few spaces within the section that I want to run. And then I'm going to do a bigger dot of orbs around them. And as I begin to fill the section, you can see sometimes I can change the scale. So I might have some smaller ones and some bigger ones. Where the a sort of dot based tangle is really useful is of course you can have them just peeping out. And what can be also a lot of fun with this particular tangle is that you can have them overlap. Really simple, deliberate dots as we begin to build them into a section. And you can see how this is a really cute tangle for popping in the background. It really doesn't detract from the tangling that you've been doing. And the way that I like to think about Rain Dotty though, is it also has a lovely cousin called Didot. When I first came across Didot, oh, I just couldn't get enough of it. So this is one where we have a solid orb, but with a little bit of a reflection. And instead of dots, we have a pathway of small deliberate lines that just go around that orb. Again, you can change the scale. So if you want to make your orb slightly bigger, do so. But do include a little bit of a highlight orb inside and then a path around. So I always imagine it's a sort of cousin of Rain Dotty here as it begins to fill the space with a little bit more drama than its very light cousin. And you can see how if you want a little bit of drama within a tile but just not too much, this is a really beautiful one for just filling in those backgrounds. Lovely deliberate spot of having solid black orbs and then a pathway that goes around each of those orbs. And of course, you can have a little bit of fun as a background technique, just as that's the purpose of this particular little reference sheet, of actually saying, well, you know, sometimes the cousins play together. And because Rain Dotty is a beautiful dot tangle, you can quite happily draw it over other tangles. So sometimes the cousins get together and they just have a little play together. So don't always think about one tangle, one section. Have a play and join them together. So just going below static here, static is a very organised one. And this one here is one that I quite often use uh, in a background and it's called cheesecloth. And this is one that just uses again my pen very lightly. Sometimes I might even have a full break in the line and you're almost like trying to draw muslin. So very lightly just put your pen, scatter the ink down in a very organised fashion. Some people like to continually go in the same direction. If that's you, do that. I prefer to just go up and down, possibly my weaving nature of following a weft thread this way and then that way. I tend to do the same with my pen. And then I'll rotate the tile and I'm going to do the same line, this time going in the opposite direction, but I'm leaving obviously my drawing hand at the same spot. And perhaps where I got to a point where I've got a break in the line, I'll make sure that I've got a bit of a break in the line in the same spot. And what it produces then is almost like a tear in your muslin cloth as the threads have got broken 
as you're going along. And it doesn't matter if you don't quite catch all your breaks. Maybe you've only got a little bit of a broken thread in one direction. That's a lovely, simple and very organised one called cheesecloth here. And it's very useful for just popping in the background. If you want something with a few lines, it needs to be heavy, but you don't want to add drama. Instead, add a bit of cheesecloth. And another one that I also like to mention just underneath the static here, um, when talking about scale, this is another one that sort of convinces us of to think about the scale when you're doing them. And this one is nipper. And if we take nipper and we have our orbs, but when it comes to the wiggly line, I'm going to throw it down the section, but then I'm going to think about that changing the scale again. And so by making the lines that are in the background not too close together, you can really change the look of how this particular tangle works. And as I say, mentioning a change of scale is really useful in the background. Go big and you'll find it looks very different to how you might perhaps normally draw it, and that can be nipper. And you might choose to add a little bit of um, some sparkle in there if you want to, or you can leave the orbs and being whole and the lines all whole for a slightly more clearer view without the sparkle. I nearly forgot what I was going to say then. The last wee one I wanted to do on the line here, see sometimes when you're tangling you go off on a different tangent than you meant to and that's all just fine. But I just want to mention these two very obvious orb tangles, tipple and pre -tomps. And the reason why I want to just sort of talk about these two is there's a lovely wee technique that you can do with these two, which is worth thinking about and remembering in a background. Is So I'm just going to draw a few in to begin with here. Whee. Tipple. So if I just get my few tipple balls in here just to start off, because there's lots of different ways of drawing tipple. As you know, and then I'm just going to go this way and turn my tile a bit, just simply because what you can do is a lovely wee technique for these two tangles, is I begin to fill in my smaller ones in between. But actually, what happens if some of them float away? And so, using a little technique of floating some of your tangles can be quite fun as the tangles begin to float away. And there's a really wee, oh, useful addition to thinking about things when you've got a background going on, that actually it doesn't all need to be completely solid to pull floats and balls away. The same with pre tomps here. You can squash them all beside each other. You can add a bit of sparkle. You can change the scale, or you can overlap them. Just slowly have a few spirals here that overlap instead of beside each other. And just the opposite of floating means you can really squeeze them together instead so sometimes you might even only get a little bit of the elements of the wee pre tomps going around, but you also can choose to take your orbs and float them away. If you do want to do that, perhaps make them look even lighter still, but once you've gone round on the outside edge, add a bit of sparkle into that as they float away. So there we go, row two, rain dotty didot, think about the cousins having a play together, very organised cheesecloth with the sparkle of the broken threads, change the scale with nipper, or float away with either tipples or print tops. I hope you've enjoyed row two, and hopefully you'll join me for video three.